Lesson 6-4, we are going to talk about parallelograms again, but we're going to get into some a little more specific. So um, today we are going to learn about rectangles. Um, I just want to remind you that rectangles have all the characteristics of our parallelogram. So don't forget all six of those things that we've talked about in the previous um, section. So a little more specific to the parallel or the rectangle. Um, it is a quadrilateral with four right angles. So again, if all of them have four right angles, it's also a parallelogram because remember, if one is 90 degrees, then all four of the other ones are 90 degrees. So we know that our rectangle might look something like that. Alrighty, so the first theorem, first characteristic we are going to talk about with our rectangle is if a parallelogram is a rectangle, so we're putting it in the family, we have the family name, then the diagonals are congruent. So we know that from J to L, that whole length is congruent to the other whole length of the diagonal, KM. So if the diagonals are congruent, then it's a rectangle. Now, remember that because it's a parallelogram, I also have them bisecting each other at their midpoint. So those um, four sections are also all congruent as well. So looking at our first problem, um, we have a rectangular garden gate that re is reinforced with our diagonals um, to prevent sagging. So we know that we're told that JK is 12 feet. LN, LN, so this segment right here is 6.5 feet. And we are asked to find KM. So notice what KM is. It's the entire diagonal. So what do we know? Because it is a parallelogram, I know that opposite sides are congruent. So I know that ML is also 12 feet. So I know that JK equals LM, which also equals 12 feet. Um, I also know that di the diagonals bisect each other because that is the property of a parallelogram. So I know that LN equals, so LN is bisected, so it equals JN, so those both equal 6.5 feet. And because I can say LN 6.5 plus NJ 6.5, the entire diagonal JL equals 13 feet 6.5 plus 6.5. So this entire length equals 13 feet. So because of the theorem we just learned, 613, we know that because it is a rectangle, my diagonals are congruent. I hope you could guess that. So I know that JL what I just saw, what I just found, is 13, which also makes KM also 13 feet. So because those diagonals are congruent, if I can find one, I can also find the other. Something else you could find, because I know all of these are right angles, could I find KL? Could I find KL or I guess you could find um, JM. So notice I have a right triangle. I have 12 feet there. 
I have 13 feet there, so because it's a right triangle, I can say 12 feet squared plus KL squared equals 13 squared, my hypotenuse, and KL actually becomes 5 feet. So just a little side note, something else I could find with that information. Go ahead and stop this um, video, do your check your progress, and then check your work. Here is your check your progress. Hope that was helpful. All right, let's move on to the next one. We're going to use some algebra while doing this. So we have a quadrilateral, and we know it's a rectangle. So we know automatically that it is a parallelogram, and it has four right angles. All right, so we are given that RTU, so this angle, RTU, R to T to U is 8x plus 4. And then we also are told that SUR, SUR, so that angle is 3x minus 2. So um, we know since um, RTSU is a rectangle, Know a few things. We first know that it has four right angles, and that's by the definition. We've already shown that on our picture. But we also know that the diagonals bisect each other. But they are also, we just learned, congruent. So if I get all this color out of the way here, we know because they are um, congruent and they bisect each other, I know that SP is congruent to UP. I also know that RP is congruent to PT. So they are all congruent, but their parts are also congruent too. But I want you to notice, because they're congruent, I want you to look at triangle UTP. Notice what type of triangle you have. I can see that it is isosceles, which makes the base angles are congruent. And since they are congruent, I know that angle RTU, so RTU, so this angle right here, is congruent to angle SUT, so this angle right here. So if I know that they're congruent, remember I also know they're equal. We put them equal because that helps us substitute in an equation. So if I know that this angle is congruent to this angle, I can also put this as 8x plus 4. Well, notice now what this right angle is made up of. It's made up of this greenish yellow color, and it's also made up of the orange angle. So, because it's 90 degrees, I know that the two angles are adding up to be 90. So I can say that ax plus 4 plus 3x minus 2 equals 90 degrees. And again, I can do that because I have an isosceles triangle, and whatever this angle is here, it also is represented here because of this isosceles triangle. And then I can add these two angles up to equal 90 degrees because of that right angle. So I'm going to go ahead and solve 8x plus 3x gives me 11x. 4 minus 2 gives me plus 2. Remember, I'm on the same side, so I do not change its sign. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. I get 11x equals 88. Finishing off that equation, I'm going to divide by 11. So my x now equals, oops, 
not 11, but maybe 8. All right, go ahead and stop this um, video and check your progress for the last one. All right, here is your answer. Just to review this again, because I have the diagonals that are congruent, I almost make this isosceles triangle. But because, now let me erase all this other stuff, I know that this exterior, or this angle right there, equals 4x minus 5. So, so does this. This also equals 4x minus 5. You could also say, because this angle right here equals 6x minus 5, so does this part, because of that isosceles triangle. And 6x minus 5 goes here that part of the angle plus 4x minus 5, which goes here, equals that 90 degree angle. So that's why you set both of those, adding them up to be 90 degrees, and then you solve that way. This is part two of section 6-4.